Oh, future manufacturing. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, recently what, we got excited a about shipment. This topic. Recently we got a shipment of Prodigy in, and it was okay. it was the best I've ever felt. It, it was so good yes. that it led me to tweet about how good the D1 felt. And then someone responded and was like, "Oh yeah, I would love it if it wasn't made in China." And I was like, "What the freak are you talking about? It's made in Georgia." And then I looked at the back, and sure enough, it was made in China. Mm-hmm. I believe it's presumably I believe it's made by Yikun. This is part of a new trend I wanted to talk about uh, in disc golf. Which is something that happens in the real world all the time. So it's just we're just seeing it in disc golf more and more. You're yeah. saying disc golf isn't the real world? Yes. Which with disc golf Touché. matrix. Um disc golf, which is companies that are being made by other companies. Um, mm-hmm. like I said, happens in the real world all the time, especially in the food industry. Yeah. Um, and the car industry and pretty much everywhere. But it has me wondering a little bit about what the future of disc golf looks like, and I'll explain that here in a second. But Latitude's parent company now manufactures for all of trilogy, so dynamic latitude and west side, castaplast, um, and we can agree they at least had a big part in Discmania if they're not currently still yeah. making their product. I believe that they are because I think that Discmania, the way they're getting around it by being like, oh, no, Latitude doesn't make our discs is because we found out Latitude had a parent company, whatever that mountain disc or whatever. Yeah. So they're not lying. Latitude's not making them, but I don't think Discmania is truly making them themselves. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But regardless, Latitude had at least a big part in getting Discmania off the ground and using their machines uh, and possibly more than I'm forgetting of. For the trilogy ones, but um, they also use robots for their manufacturing, which I think is another interesting part of the future. And someone the other day was explaining to me that they believe that that's the reason trilogy plastic is notorious for breaking in quicker. And for that like middle dome is because the suction cup, when it gets the plastic off while it's still hot, yeah. stretches it and lessens the integrity of the disc. So like the plastic, that Italian blend plastic or whatever, yeah. um, it doesn't react well to the suction cup and so when the suction cup pulls it it creates that bowl in the middle but it can also do the opposite but either way it stretches the disc and they think that reduces the quality of the disc well so that to me i mean that's a perfectly fine theory however two things to mention number one they can figure out how to fix that problem that's how that's why robots are so good like it's very easy to fix things like that um so that's just a need of new technology number two i've thrown the new sea line stuff from disc mania and it's very durable and overstable and every so like clearly there has like those, if those are being manufactured by robots clearly well, get it's this. been figured out i heard the Ital- italian blend is this just the first time it's being marketed to the mass audience it's what like crystal and like uh pretty much anything that like that super see through yeah. plastic is always just been italian blend interesting like, that's just, just what better it marketing. is they what does italian marketing. blend mean like what is the plastic probably actually? it's just sourced from italy Hmm. That's probably all it is. Like they probably order. Like I mean, it's the same plastic they use to make the Italy. That would be like if we found. Yes, that would be like if we found T-shirt wholesalers to buy like blank shirts, and they just happened to be from Sweden, and we were like, it's a Swedish blend cotton. Like I feel like that's the marketing spin they basically. I think we should do exactly. See what I mean? Like that. How Volvos have Swedish steel? Yeah, exactly. And what is it? It's just steel from Sweden. It's also just a Volvo. Hey, dude. Dude, I've got like three Volvos, dude. I know, I know. I'm I forgot. Just don't, uh, please Yikun, don't get that out there. Yikun also manufactures for themselves Prodigy, Discmania, Active Line, and possibly more. Enova makes themselves Infinite and Millennium. MVP yeah. makes Thought Space Athletics and Mint. All those also might it, have more. I don't really know the point I'm trying to make, but it's something I noticed recently, and I feel like we might see a split soon. This is where I think things get interesting, where... Some companies use the cheapest manufacturing and materials possible while still having a decent product and are able to undercut the market. And then some go the opposite way, yeah. like mixed by hand, developed by hand, well, and turn into a more boutique brand with higher end plastics and better quality control. It's tricky. Like that's kind of a split you see like PXG and golf versus like Titleist is like middle of the road, right? And then, well, it's still high end, no. but PXG, then you have like your main brands, then you have your cheap brands. Well, PXG is not all that much better than any of the, the way but the way they were marketing PXG themselves for years marketed themselves as the most expensive club that's what i'm saying i want disc golf hasn't had that happen right yet. yes you're right you're absolutely right I, the interesting thing about golf clubs is like there is a number of brands top brands i'm i i'll just throw out i think titleist and taylor made definitely are involved in this if not some more that all use um the same manufacturer for their golf irons and Mura, I believe, is the company. Um, but this is something that happens, obviously, like you mentioned, everywhere. And I, ex- what I expect will happen is that we're just going to, at the beginning, we're just going to see a few giants emerge, which is what's happening already. already. You're going to have Yikun and Latitude, two giants over on the other side of the pond. And then you're probably going to have Innova and MVP 
be the two big giants over here. I guess Discraft, you could Yeah, you could Discraft, throw. I forgot to throw them in there. You Dude could, does make DGA and Plastic Addict they are still around. Yeah, they are right now still doing all their own manufacturing, and I think the companies that have invested in a lot of infrastructure will have enough of a leg up that they'll absorb the small disc companies and make that like part of their business model. But it, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how long that goes because like, like PXG, another big part of their marketing was that their clubs, I believe, are manufactured in the USA, and they're very loud about that. So like, it's kind of how every other industry is. Like, there's there's two sides to it because like Nike makes very premium clothing, however it's not manufactured in the U.S. Um, so it can be like brands can thrive with overseas manufacturing certainly. Now the ethics of that manufacturing or the quality sometimes can be scrutinized, but it can be done successfully on a big scale, obviously. But then on the other hand, you have the companies um, that stay American manufactured. There's a lot of symp- uh, sympathy for that from consumers, and that's a big marketing thing mm-hmm. to say that you're manufactured in the U.S. I would I expect is going to happen is as more disc manufacturers move overseas with their manufacturing, in particular to China, because that's more of a buzzword. You're going to see more companies like Innova and Discraft using that "Made in the USA" tagline a little yeah. more heavily. Well, I'm wondering too. Another thing we have we've seen Prodigy do it slightly, Discmania do it slightly, but they haven't done it fully. Where Prodigy has the Ace line, which yeah. now obviously more of Prodigy's be made in China, but that was made in China and was cheaper. Discmania has the Active line, made in China, cheaper. Right. Um, but again, their Discmania Active line, Prodigy Ace line. What we haven't seen, to my knowledge at least, is a company like Innova be like, "Hey." We're gonna keep making our discs the way we do. Let's start a whole separate company, mm. and that's our like budget brand, like Toyota and Lexus and car yeah. dealerships. They go the opposite way, where it's like Innova. We don't want to we don't want to water down our branding because like yeah. if you buy a Discmania Active Line disc and you throw it and it doesn't, it's not a great quality. It yeah. could have a negative effect on Discmania's yeah. branding. That's actually a very interesting point. Um, so that's the whole reason car companies do it is like the their why what Toyota markets to isn't what a, a luxury car wouldn't do well in Toyota. Yeah. So they have to split into Lexus because then they can market a completely different that, way. That's fascinating. And you know, cause in golf, they do that with golf clubs with like a driver. If Taylor made comes out with the M one, they a lot of times will have the M two or like the rocket balls driver that like they, they fit price ranges. Like that's cause right now disc golf for the history of the sport, it's always been that even the most premium disc is really like what's the difference? Ten dollars. So like, there's not really like companies aiming to fit windows of price range. Like golf balls is the perfect example. There's so many different windows. Um, but it, as discs get more expensive, and especially if you start seeing companies decide to take the approach of let's make the most expensive disc and let's market that way and see if it works, you may see companies like Innova say this is our most premium disc, and because like plastic types kind of do that, but not really. But like, I also think it'll have to do with like disc innovation and technology because like is plastic premium plastic enough to drive consumers to different price ranges and how big is that gap because i don't think it really matters until you get to the point where okay now we're selling a driver for 30 dollars and 15 dollars like once you get to that kind of gap now we're talking about something so that will be interesting to keep note of yeah i just think like someone's gonna do it eventually they might already be doing it because like from if you're looking from the outside in, Lexus and Toyota are ran as two different businesses. Right. You don't see Lexus and Toyota like there's not this big crossover blend mm-hmm. in marketing, yeah. how everything's ran. But if you peel back the curtain, it's like oh, it's literally like some of their cars are literally like that's just a Toyota with a Lexus and like a little bit higher in features. Nice interior, but it's yeah. so that the Lexus brand can market away to a richer audience, and the Toyota brand markets away to your more everyday man. Yeah. That in disc golf hasn't happened yet. It's happened in an incorrect way, in my opinion, of like the Prodigy Ace line, the Discmania Active line, where again, you're risking the Discmania or Prodigy yeah. name getting. Yeah, I think those weakened. were more about demand, though. I agree. Yeah. Uh, because it happened during COVID, but I'd be very curious if like Innova or someone like that does it, where they're like, hey, Innova's going to be loud and proud, made in the USA, push it higher yeah. end product, and then we're going to start this secondary you know, Samson disc. I just saw Samson, Mike Samson discs. And that's a whole separate thing. It's under yeah. end of us, the parent company, but like, unless you're in the know, you're not going to know. Right. And mm-hmm. that's, you know, cheaper made, but they can even use the same molds. Like, 
oh, this is just our yeah. MD3 mold, but now it's in this cheaper plastic or our Rock 3 or whatever. Yeah. It's just in cheaper plastic, but it, now it's under a different name and it's completely... I'm it's a very you, capable thing to happen. I'm waiting for the day that a company comes out there and they start selling discs for like 50 bucks and they make that their whole marketing thing. Like we have the most premium material. Yeah. Like that. I, well, the only thing that we've seen close is EV7 with putters. That's the only, which they're not doing the premium thing, but that's the first company we've seen that like, this is our thing and we're not yeah, moving. Yeah. Where it's like, hey, we make the best putters on the market. Right. Is we're, what not, they're saying. we're not just a disc golf company. We have a focus. Like this yeah. is what we do. Yeah, I agree. That's, that is, a, yeah, I think, or if you see a company do something like, cause like Scotty Cameron is now a part of TaylorMade, right? right. Where it's like, why no, would Taylor, uh, Titleist. Titleist, why would Titleist have a whole separate putter company? It's like, well, because a Scotty Cameron putter is it th- like, will yeah. companies do that of like discrafts? Like, Hey, we, or prodigy is actually a better example. We kill the mid range game, but our prodigy branding's holding back how good our mids are. Yeah. Let's split off. And we just start a mid range only company. Yeah. And it's like our, our mid range and putters. Cause that's what prodigy so good at. Maybe we'll call it something like EV7. Yeah. And we'll, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you, see, you can see where my line of thought I, is there. It's like, if you are worried about X, Y, or Z is holding this part back, starting a separate company, we just haven't seen that in disc golf yet. And watching manufacturing start to move to China, start to move to Sweden, yeah. companies start taking over, then it's like, well, I guess actually we have seen it because like latitude. Yeah. Dynamic latitude, trill- like actually we've kind of seen it but regardless we haven't seen it on a bigger scale i think something that's interesting it is interesting that is a too really, that's a really good thought because you know and we, we've talked about this a lot but the disc world is not really driven yet by competition between the companies they're yeah. not trying to one up with new marketing or new technology because like in golf that's everything what's our fancy new looking thing what's the technology why should you buy it versus the competitor that's not happening in disc golf yet because they've all just been thriving off of their fan base and what the players drive but what will happen is because in golf there is a you know yes there are loyalists to companies certainly um you also have people that hit clubs because of players. However, there is a big audience in golf that is looking for technology. That'll say, oh my gosh, TaylorMade has this new thing that's going to make me hit the ball straight. Well, I'm going to get the TaylorMade driver. That carbon face on the stealth driver. Like, right, carbon face, twist face I'm not technology. even that into golf and I want that and thing like, so Yeah, bad. so like <laughs> that is something in, and they're going to tell you this is what it does versus the competitor's driver. That is something in disc golf that hasn't happened yet, but my theory is that because it's getting so crowded now with manufacturers, and you're starting to see a shift in disc golf recently where people are trying new things, mm-hmm. you know, and because the retailers like ourselves have become bigger um, proponents in disc golf, you know, you know, infinite discs, like you're talking about like big entities and they're put like, obviously they're trying to sell every brand. So you're starting to see that people are getting into the sport without preconceived ideas of what they want to throw. They're trying new things. And I think because of that competition, companies are going to start realizing that, the game is changing to where now we need to be thinking about not necessarily just new molds or new players, but like what's a new product, you know, what's a new plastic blend, a new disc technology we haven't tried. That's what I want to see. Well, they should have seen, I mean, I'm sure people have because pe- the people behind disc golf companies aren't stupid, but seeing the hype that disc mania was able to create by just throwing the word Italian blend right. in there. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. It's, de- like it's giving there. an identity to your plastic. Yeah, it's, it's there. And what did we all do? We just wanted to feel that plastic, you know? So, you know, you come out with a disc and you, even if it's just a new mold and you're like, we figured out something with aerodynamics, like this is the most blah, 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 blah. Like that is what gets people excited. Like the loft disc, the, that right. wink. Exactly. I mean, the you, evidence, you thought you are going to yeah. hate it, but you wanted to the, throw it. The evidence is there that if you try new things, people are going to want to see it. And like, that's so that's just what I want for disc golf. I want to see more competition between brands because it creates more innovation within the product that I think desperately needs it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's Griplock. Lock.